Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of our interview with Atlanteans and Plato. We've got Abby Dagnis, as we did in part one, and we have Plato, uh, Atlantean Eleanor, and I don't know, of course we have Eric. So if you have not watched part one, please go back and watch it and then come back to this one. So this is all, these are all questions based on a book written by uh, Tuesday Labsan Rampa, a Tibetan monk, uh, about the Atlanteans and the, that civilization. So for a backstory, please go back to, to part one. All right, now we're going to go on to parts of the book. The book states time capsules were concealed beneath the sands of Egypt, beneath a pyramid in South uh, America, and at a certain spot in Siberia. Each place was marked by the symbol of the time, the Sphinx. Is this true? Eleanor or Eric or whoever was Plato? It's, it's Leonora. Oh, Leonora. <laughs> Leonora, oh, but I'm sorry, can't... Leonora. Okay, that's like a rolling of a tongue thing that I can't. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna even try. <laughs> uh, Plato's gone, by the way. <laughs> okay, I have this monk guy here, okay. um, but then there's also this woman that's behind him. So. Oh, you have a uh, Tuesday, the monk. Yes, okay. but there's also a woman that's there with him. I believe there was a woman that helped transcribe right. and work with him with this. I don't know if she did most of it and. She's saying she's saying that she had written actually a lot of it, okay. but she's very um she's not vain like she she it's not like she wants to take credit for it. It's right. just it just it I was a is what it is. Well, yeah. was it channeled all this stuff by the way. This was during a deep meditation mm. over a course of years mm. uh, that was transcribed in the most highest of respect. Okay. So this was not just something that was just like written out before bedtime. They're half asleep after they've been in the fields all day hoeing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, like this was very much like a written under meditation. Okay, um, that makes sense. A lot like how Edgar Casey did a lot of his yeah right um, writings. It right. it was like in a trance like state. So uh, this woman, I. Okay, it's a much clearer picture now. Okay, I get it. So this woman was in a trans like state. Mm -hmm. And then from there it was transcribed by this monk. The Tuesday. So it was oh, okay. right. It was a work together deal. Um, but it just wasn't appropriate for the times for her to be given wow. anything you know, which it wasn't important to her. That wasn't the point. There was no purpose. There was no ego as part of that for her. And she was very, okay. she's very grateful and happy um, that that information's out there. She says, it's, she says it's as accurate as it can, as she, as she knows it to be. Um, but she doesn't remember because she was in a trans like state. Yeah. Right. During. Right. So, um, so uh, these places, these time capsules, marked uh, by the symbol of the times the sphinx is this true in uh, the sands of egypt south america beneath the pyramid in south uh, america and a certain spot in siberia are the do those time capsules exist there okay first off there didn't need to be a need for a time capsule okay there wasn't a purpose for at the time of the Sphinx for somebody to go, hey, and this will be fun in a hundred years. Let's dig this up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that wasn't okay. <laughs> that well, what is it? Is there anything um, there, there in those three? At least three it, it, it's a symbol of um, divine protection. So again, okay. let's go back to like extraterrestrials. And it had to do with worship. It had to do with, uh, it had its own, like I'm seeing stairs, like it's not like it was just like a stone sphinx. Like th there was some sort of cave, like underground situation there. Okay. Um, oh, wow. I wonder if this is true. So extraterrestrials needed to get buried somewhere too. Oh. So that actually had something to do with a monument for them. Okay. That's really interesting. In all three places? Yeah. 
Okay, I mean, were there it, other records buried with them? Like it was a monument. Mm -hmm. It was a uh I'm hearing replica of um impeachment to a new civilization. That's right. So okay. Don't know what that means, but it must mean something. Doesn't Eric, know. you want to expound on that? What that means? So he's saying it's actually pretty simple. He's saying that it has to do with um, a new world, a new world order, a new way of being, a new thought process. Like, you know, um, this is where the world is going now. And we are to be thankful and to, um, it's like a gift, like being thankful. And it's not like they looked at these like they were gods. It was more of a gift of prayer you know, um, to evolvement of civilizations. So there were in different places mm -hmm. because it, like the pyramids, it, it wasn't just one spot. It was in various different places, um, that had this, that had sphinxes, you know, um, well, that actually has a lot to do with, with Egyptians, you know, um, the Egyptian civilization, and the involvement from the time of Atlantia to like the Roman Empire, the Egyptians, I don't know which one came first, but maybe it was the same time, who knows? Um, <laughs> well, but, yeah, so. Uh, well, were these, instead of time capsules, maybe they were like blueprints uh, because after the civilization was mostly destroyed, we had okay, to, so to create Eric, a new world. Is that the case? Eric is very much referring it to you know how france gave us i think it was france gave us the statue of liberty yeah it's very much like that oh. it was a symbol of of worship but not like they thought that that actual stone was a god yeah. but symbol of good faith from the different parts of the world that has sphinxes um that we all come from the same thought process here so we don't need to be war that's what eric's saying okay so is there any information or is it just you know something to idolize or is there anything buried like there is there is more to it. There, there is more to it. it it's this et thing like goes through time and mm -hmm um space and through all of and still exists that there's ets here that are look like humans act like humans but are not you know okay. kind of like in the men in black movies yeah, yeah. um right. so these sphinxes were a recognition and a symbol of 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 their time and what they did for us and as a thank you and to remind uh, civilization that they're united, yeah. they're united. And um, I believe that some of these ETs, when their bodies were done here, because it seems like that whatever earthly plane we're on here, they, you know, the oxygen and, and the way that they existed couldn't exist as long. So their lifespan were really short here. Okay. So, so it sounds like there was, from how Eric's explaining it, there were actually ET terrestrial burial oh. grounds that had yeah. something to do with these sphinxes. Okay. Um, I don't know if they're underneath them. I guess I'll have to try and look well, up here, something. There's something, something more maybe. about this. We saw the, the book states, we saw the great statues of the Sphinx, which did not originate in Europe, I mean in Egypt, and we received an explanation of its form. Man and animals talked and worked together in those far off lands. So maybe that's why it looked like a man and a and a animal. The cat was the most perfect animal for power and intelligence. Man himself is a is an animal. So the ancients made a figure of a large cat body to indicate power and endurance. And upon the body, they put the breast and the head of a woman. The head was to indicate human intelligence and reason while the breast indicated that man and animal could draw spiritual and mental nourishment from each other, each for the other. Wow. That symbol was then as common as are the statues of Buddha or the star of David or the crucifix of the present day. 
All right, so that's the end of that writing. Did the Egyptians understand the meaning of the Sphinx back then? Not to its entirety. Okay. Uh, they were too ego ego driven. Yeah. Eric saying, right. To really quite understand the intent of 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 the purpose of even why they were doing it. It's kind of like they were just told by somebody to do it and they did. Um, and then they took on their own concepts and meanings of it. But the higher meaning, the bigger meaning, the bigger picture, very few people like we're at privy to really understanding the concepts well there's probably this. hope that eventually we would get it um it's really about what we were discussing before about how people had their it, we weren't just humans for a while we yeah. we had and we're still not just humans we all have like a little bit of everything in us you know like my mom just got her dna done and she's so excited about it she's like i have one percent irish oh <laughs> i'm so cool. excited about that <laughs> oh. okay um but it, it, it it's like we all still have stardust in us we all still yeah. have that dna and from, uh, from so, other um, et races right yeah, this is saying? really yeah exactly yeah. this is the sphinxes were not just about like humans and animals yeah. having sure ability to communicate like that it was more like we are not just us they are not just them yeah. we are as a whole and we work together in unison and yeah. so that is a gift yeah absolutely yeah all right how were the pictures taken and preserved when the destruction was taking place i didn't know that was taking place but um Were there pictures there in these, well, not time capsules, obviously, but um, how were the, how was the, how were things preserved when now, there were they were digging artifacts? Up? There are artifacts. Okay. With things. Okay. There are artifacts. It wasn't about, like I said, you know, and like, I remember in the third grade, we did a time capsule. Right. I think we even put a Twinkie in there or something. Oh boy. <laughs> we were like, it probably was perfectly <laughs> preserved. Dig it up and be like, wow, well, look what we did in the 80s. You know, <laughs> it, it wasn't about that. It was more like human sacrifice. It was about um like people were it's kind of morbid, but people were like actually buried in there, you know, as like a human sacrifice. Okay. Um and I'm seeing like cups, I'm seeing a lot like how they find the par pharaoh's pyramids okay you know, there, there are artifacts that are in there but it wasn't to have it be a time capsule it was as yeah. a gift as a as a right. blessing as like the statue of liberty thing right Ex exactly yeah all right so why who had the need to sacrifice and idolize was it on the ET side or the human or human hybrid side? It was the human hybrid side okay. that, that there was a lot because, because they were part human and part ET. It's like, they still had that ego. So they had a lot yeah. of masculinism mm. that they, you know, just the power, it just got to their heads. Yeah. about what they could do how they could do it and how they could manipulate the world and okay. then it quite literally blew up in their faces mm. and right. stopped it. That how long did it take to prepare these tap time capsules that are really not time capsules quite a bit of time uh you can uh, how many digits you know, well, they were they were there's more to it. They're they're mapped out because with ast with astrology. Okay. So like Plato's actually back in here. He's showing me like uh, with the stars and the alignment that um I don't know if he was an astrologer. Sorry, I don't know anything about him. But he's showing the stars and the alignment in the sky, and it again had to do with communication. Um, everything they did had a purpose. There yeah. was never just a reason for things. Like I'll go to Hobby Lobby and be like. I just really need to buy this object you know 
<laughs> it wasn't like that for them. Okay. It, it, it was real purpose and design purpose that took a lot of time and, and a lot of communication to other areas of the world um, through this ET communication. Um, okay, so Eric's saying is what you see is not what you get you know, what we see is, is not really, it, it's our reality, but it's not the reality. Oh. You know, um, there's things further down that are under Ooh. that, that, you know, could be artifacts that we'll find eventually, but are beyond. And like Eric showing me like kryptonite, you know, from Superman. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god, that's cool. <laughs> but no, there 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 is minerals, there is like compounds that are being preserved. Um and why? Like, I don't know, but I'm just hoping it's not like, you know, in Tom Cruise's movie, like End of the Worlds or War of the Worlds. I'm hoping it's not like that. <laughs> uh -oh. It's not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so is there something under the paw of the Sphinx? People think so. Is there something under the what? The pole. Paul of the paw of the Sphinx. I'm gonna mute so we don't hear them. Paul of the Sphinx. Uh, it has to do with some kind of map. There's some kind of map, something about an astrological map there where it actually shows us and dictates um so i have an actually i have okay. an archangel coming in right now um metatron Met oh archangel. metatron yeah yeah Hello, so archangel metatron. talking about um like because i guess he was a scribe he's a scribe and so he's talking about the akashic records and how it's all written in the akashic records it's not for our lifetime to know or understand but it's all written yeah. down Okay. And he's got it. So don't worry. We're going to find out. We're going to figure it out. Okay. Um, awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Let's see. How did these people, human hybrids, whatever, know with this level of effort and certainty that their world was coming to an end? Well, actually, did they, for one? And if so, they didn't know. They didn't know. Their egos were too big. They were too empowered. They were taking, um, they were starting to enslave the, these tall, I, okay, I don't know anything about aliens, but they're saying like tall whites. I think, okay. those are good ones, right. Are those the good ones? Those are good ones. He says. Yeah. So, um, they were starting to enslave them. Why? Because it was a job were starting to feel like because they had this power and because they were half human, they had this ego. So they, they were, they were starting to enslave them and take advantage of, of the gifts that they were given from them. So instead of being thankful and curious and, and helping it, just like the reptilian part of human. Oh, okay. But the really tall whites started. weren't doing that. They're good, right? Uh, yeah, they were good. And, and, and they were trying to help and they're like our galactic Avengers, you know, um, they're yeah. really trying to help. And they're very concerned right now because of just the state of the world, you know, and, okay, and well, we'll get into that. I don't want to get into that now. Although okay. we should eventually, but we've got so many questions. That's um, their fault. I didn't bring it up. I know. I know. It's all of them. So, um, so somebody must, did anyone up high know that the world was about to end and was directing these slaves or whatever to, to bury this stuff, preserve it. So, God gave us free will. That okay. was his gift to humanity. So with knowing that, you know, God himself, uh, Jesus was still up there, even though he didn't come down yet. Oh you yeah. Know, it, it was, it was, it was, it was up, it was up to us. It was, it was up to us, our human part of us to, and it's like, we were being warned. We were being okay. taught. We were somebody trying, knew. Like, somebody it's knew. Us, it, yeah, it's it's like here, here you go what are you going to do with it you yeah. know and it was like oh well you chose wrong you know terrible but okay how long after these time capsules that are not time capsules uh after they were completed was the civilization destroyed 
about 500 years. Okay. On page 96, it states the whole surface of the world was in a state of change, of continuous motion. How long did it take for the rising and the falling of land to stabilize? Well, first off, I just want to go back to the sphinxes. I'm seeing them actually oh, okay. being covered in um, materials. Like they don't look like they look like now, like a marble material and gold. So they don't look like they look like now. Mm. Okay. So there was materials that were over it, laid over it beautifully. So beautifully. Wow. Um, and these like brilliant blue tiles that look like ringlets around like the the arms yeah. of the sphinxes. Okay. So what was what was the again? Can you, can you repeat that? Well, what the, was was that did uh, people steal that? All the those the gold and the or did they were they destroyed by the cataclysm, so to speak? Or both? It was a little bit of both because there wasn't just one flood and one crisis with Atlantis. There was quite a few years of just like chaos with mm -hmm. the whole shift of the earth. Yeah. You know, it like went like <laughs> completely oh. on its side, but it, it did shift, it did a little tilt. <laughs> and so it shifted things. And, um, so it caused for years a lot of just destruction. To so several years, several years, several more, several years. Yeah, it, it just caused a lot of destruction, and well, it changed the whole that's interesting. Really, cause way the world is right now. Like things that were underwater then are not underwater now, and vice versa. It's like there's more civilizations that were advanced that are underwater. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, there's archaeological evidence that where the Sphinx, the, the main Sphinx is in Egypt, uh, that it was tropical. There's evidence of water uh, uh, lapping on the paws. Uh, uh, there used to be the tropics, not just desert. Uh, so that that changed probably because of the shift in the earth, maybe. So, like, I'll give you an example. Um, Eric's bringing up the Sahara Desert. Like that was not just desert that actually used to be, well, it was underwater for a long time, Yeah. but then before that, it was a vast tropical land, tropical yeah. landscape. That's what I understand. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, on page 93, the people of the future, if there are any, that's what it says. So who said this and what was this? person's fiction function in that civilization the people of the future and and how did this person know their civilization was at an end so the states the people of the future if there are any that's the phrase who said this the future people of the future from now mm. okay so we'll say that the people of the future from now there will be people <laughs> the world is not going to come to an end soon. It will be a very long time. It will not be in our lifetime or our children's lifetime or our children children's lifetime. It will be in the far, far future. But uh, did this person have a function in the, in the in the Atlantean civilization? These people of the future, future, and, and I guess in respect to their their present. We probably need more. So I'm being told time travel. Yeah, I'm being told time. Okay, so Eric's explaining to me about time travel and multiple dimensions and how that's a thing. And remember how like time is not linear and he's showing me it going like this. Okay. Hmm. So throughout time, there has been crossovers with people um, and with from different times and dimensions, ET specifically. That's how they, that's how they travel. Is yeah. Crossed um just like bigfoot you know um he's saying they're starlight beings that cross-dimensionally uh go to different times and try and help the shifts and oh. educate i don't awesome. know if that's answering the question this person has I did, but uh, uh, so what i mean so they I weren't future and, and atlanteans coming to warn the the current atlanteans at that time no okay so they were star beings. Star oh. beings. All right. And they knew that that civilization as in its current state, in that state was going to end. They knew because no matter 
whether you're a human or an ET, like it doesn't matter. We have source energy. And so they also know that they're not in control because there is a higher being a source energy. Okay. So that gives us free will. So the word Jesus Christ or Yeshua, you know, may not have existed, but it doesn't matter that concept that it was above what they could do and they would do what they would try and do. But at the end of the day, we would make the choice and that's what happened. That makes sense. All, All right. I could do was yes. last but not least, thank you Tuesday love song Rampa. This, this person says, or, or your scribe or you're the ones who channel this stuff. Is there anything else you would uh, wish to tell us about this civilization before we bring in a representative, which we're going to do in part three, which is not today. Is there anything that you- Anything else that that the, uh, that the, the monk or any, any of you guys want to say, including Eric, before we bring in in, into part three, a representative for, from this, Atlantean ancient civilization. Um, so that woman, Le 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 Nora, <laughs> she's stepping back in and she's she's discussing about just the powers of botanicals that existed then that do still exist now, and um, the power of energy work and the things they were able to do, like crazy things that you would see in movies, like bending water. Oh. You know, um, the way they were able to manipulate uh, objects just by using telepathy and, and their hands. Um, they definitely had a, a higher vibrational source that they were able to tap into. And it had to do with their anatomy that was that was not 100 percent human. But it wasn't just Atlanteans that weren't 100% human. It was like, we still aren't 100% human. Yeah. Still aren't. It's just over the transition of, of you know, growth, Darwinism. It, it, it like parts of it obviously evolved and changed and we don't have it as much as, but some of us do, but yeah. some of us do. And that's why you have people that can tap in a little bit easier. Yeah. And can bend um, spoons and stuff like that. Yeah. Or like you like people like me that, you know, do this. It's like, where did it come from? How come I can do it? But somebody else mm -hmm. has a harder time. You know, it, it it's like anybody can, but I don't know. Some people are just better at math. Some yeah, are how, better. yeah. So how much uh ET DNA does one person have compared to the other? What is junk DNA? You know, we have DNA that mm -hmm. nobody knows what it is. So the scientists say it's junk. Is that ET in origin? Some of it, at least. Some of it is, we'll say junk, the stuff that they can't describe. Okay. The, 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 the things that they don't understand that they don't have words for. So instead they put it as that. Can it be activated? Maybe it's already active. If not. It can be, it can be activated. It's more of the source of uh, finances to put into really studying that part of DNA mm. to figure out where that comes from and how, because a lot of it is stardust yeah. and a lot of it is alien, I guess, is if yeah. you want to use the word, but we it's can't really, and then the government only wants us to know so much. I know. So not, well, things are the, not as two people, Eric. I says. know. I know. Don't trust the government. So in my main, in our main Atlantis um, scalar service, mm -hmm. uh, the energy repair, protection, and enhancement, it's got so much in it. God. But one of the things is to activate any kind of DNA that's dormant that allows us to reach our fullest divine potential. So there's that. I just want to throw that in. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you, um, Tuesday Lab Song Rampa. Thank you, Leonor. Uh, Leonora. Anyway, yeah, thank you all, Plato. Uh, and also thank you, viewers. Please share this. Hit the notification bell. If you want, hit the like button. If you don't, not gonna hurt my feelings. So check out Atlantis. Uh, I mean, yeah, atlantiscaler.com, but also channeling eric.com. Love you all. Bye, Abby. Bye, Eric. Bye. <laughs> Love y'all.